This is Rob Tabbert for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Delighted to be joined for the first time, might I add, by Joe Weller. We're here in Las Vegas ahead of Deontay Wilder's huge rematch with Tyson Fury. How are you, Joe? Very good, mate. Sun's shining. Um, obviously, we've had David Hay, Lennox Lewis, uh, Frank Warren all about, and uh, they've gone home. I'm still hanging around because I want to do a Boxing Social interview. So, yeah. Well, I'm very glad that you've decided to hang around. Um, while we're, we're talking about the sun and what have you, it surprised me to hear this is your first time in Las Vegas. Yeah. In it? Like, I've never been. I've, all, I've been to like Los Angeles a few times, but here, never. And I just want to make sure that, are you going to be going on nights out and stuff? Like, I, want, I want to do like a big one. All, all, all the lads, IFL, Boxing Social, literally all of us to go out and uh, experience it. Because obviously, yeah, I never have. Well, just in case our, our bosses are looking at this, absolutely <laughs> not. Definitely won't be going out in Las Vegas. Um, but yeah, you're becoming a little bit of a regular fixture around these fight weeks. Um, rather exciting, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, look, I love it. I think that's the biggest thing. When you enjoy something, you're passionate about it, you can, you know, you want to keep coming back. And I think, you know, whenever the opportunities come up, uh, like BT Sport this time, I'm straight, you know, I'm there. I never turn it down, I, you know. I love being part of it. I love boxing. So to do like a proper boxing event that's not a, just a YouTube boxing event this time is, you know, it's cool. It's another step forward. So, yeah, it's good. What's the difference between covering a YouTube boxing event and covering a fight like this? To be fair, mate, it's less carnage. <laughs> like if this sort of media day that we've kind of had uh, was YouTube boxing, it would be, you know, it'd be rowdy. You get so many different weird characters because obviously on YouTube, Everyone's a bit mental, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's just a lot more carnage. But I, I expect the fireworks and the deliver. You know what what we're going to see on fight night to be far more than anything you see on uh, YouTube boxing. So, yeah, mate, can't wait. Well, we'll go so far as to say that you know some of the YouTube fights are very exciting, but we'll, we'll right. see. I think this Saturday may may surpass it a little bit. Talk to you about the fight anyway. Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury. So I think it's one of them, you can't really call it, like, I want Fury to win, I want him to sm I want him to win by knockout, but is that possible? Like, realistically, it's a 19 stone bloke that can box, that has knocked people out, like, many times, but he should be able to do it, and, uh, you know, that's what I'm hoping for, but at the same time, you know, like Wilder says, he has to be perfect for two seconds, while uh, Fury needs to do it for, you know, for the whole match, Wilder needs two seconds, and the momentum that he's got, you know, he's done some, you know, some serious damage on his last opponents. He's got momentum, he's got the confidence. I, I feel like compared to last time, Wilder's going to be better. Whereas, is Fury going to be better? You know, he's got that cut on his eye. That if that goes in the first couple of rounds, mate, it's, that's going to be horrible. And it's going to really, you know, it will have an effect. So... It, it looks like it's leaning more towards Wilder. You know, David Hay is adamant that Wilder's going to do it. But, yeah, I just hope Fury pulls through. What did you make of the first fight? Mate, oh, I've never been so emotionally invested. Like, watching from every, every second of that fight, I was stood up. Like, literally, I was there, you know, feeling... Because, you know, Fury is connected to a lot of us, especially, you know, the mental health stuff, the comeback, the story. It was so... I was so connected to it. And, you know, the fight itself, it was... <laughs> I mean, it was class. It was, you know, Fury doing a boxing masterclass on Wilder. Wilder did nothing and it, you know, it really filled you with that, you know, yes, he's fucking doing it. Um, obviously the last round where, you know, the knockout, and, well, the knockdown, that was, that was the worst thing. I thought it was over, I thought it was out and to see him come back and then fucking take the piss with his arms behind his back, you know, it was, just, it was class and I just hope that he brings that and adds to it and just wins. That's just what I want, I want a Fury win. You're pretty revved up for this, aren't you? Mate, so revved up. <laughs> Just talking about it, like, I love it. Uh, and I think that's the big thing, you know. The whole YouTube boxing stuff is one thing, but actual you, you know, actual boxing, I love it. I, you know, if not even more. Well, obviously, yeah, more. That's what. That's why I got into the sport, following actual boxing. So, yeah, man, I, I, can't, I cannot wait for this fight. Obviously, you fought yourself, but how has your, how's your views on boxing changed? The more events you've covered, the bigger the fights that you've covered. How are you different as a boxing fan or a boxing enthusiast? than you were when you first kind of took an interest in the sport? Yeah. I think, well, having the camp, actually training, learning about boxing, you know, even though I didn't necessarily do anything on the night, you know, you learn so much just training. And I think that helped me understand more about the actual sport and when I'm watching it. So there, you know, I became so much invested. And then actually being here, feeling it, because you don't feel it like, you know, when you're here, you're on each day, you know, going to the weigh-in, going to the press conference, 
feeling the, the momentum of the event build up as you go into fight day, it's not, you can't really compare, it's not like nothing else. It, it, you know, it's so good and I, every time it's just getting me more and more addicted to the sport. So yeah, mate, it's class. You've said in the past that you don't want to box again, but we were just inside and you were shaking out, having a little bit of a shadow box and, and showing us the moves. What, what, what's that all about? Is there, have we got a re uh, return to the ring coming soon? Mate, look, I love boxing and that's what it comes down to. Like, I was in the gym 5am this morning, shadow boxing. I, I enjoy it, you know? I think, I say this on every interview, pretty much when I'm asked about the whole, you know, am I going to step inside? And I think you should only step inside when you genuinely want to fight. When you, there's, you know, you want to fight. And right now, at this moment in time, I'm, I'm, there's no one I want to fight. So I think, yeah, I'm enjoying all of this, you know, being part of it, learning more about boxing, getting more into it, getting my foot in the door with the hopes that, you know, when I'm like 40 years old, I'm like the front man of what, whether it's boxing, whether it's football, like some form of sport, I want to be like the front man presenting it, doing, you know, that, that guy, he's the guy that does the whatever sport it is. Because I think, you know, when I get invested, I, c I can really, I can do it. Even though on paper, people can look and go, he's got no credibility. Or well, he's done one YouTube fight and done, thrown no punches. Who, who the fuck is he? But I think, you know, I believe that when I get invested into something, no, I, can, I can do it. So, yeah, um, that's the aim to continue with this and see where it goes. Well, I'd like to say I'd welcome you into the uh, online YouTube boxing market reporting, but I don't really want to be out of a job. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, like, I don't know at what point, because I, yeah, I don't do the actual boxers. Like, there's been realistically opportunities for me to interview these guys, but on my, on my YouTube channel, it only really makes sense for the real YouTube yeah, boxing, yeah, yeah. so your job's safe, mate. <laughs> well, thanks, that's nice to hear. <laughs> um, you've mentioned about YouTube boxing, um, what it might take to tempt you back into the ring. I heard you saying to Mr. Coon Cassius over there that maybe YouTube boxing is maybe dead or maybe dying out. Oh, yeah. What can you tell me about that? Because obviously we saw Jake Paul versus Gibb not too long ago. Jake Paul versus KSI is all, all, all the rage at the minute and all the talk at the minute. Where are we going with YouTube boxing? Where can you see it this time next year? I think, look, the KSI Jake fight, that's the big one. You know, we want it well. A lot of fans will say they don't want it. You know, a lot of fans want to see Jake Paul done. They don't want to, him to have that opportunity. But I think it's going to happen. Maybe not this year. I think next year JJ is going to want want to make Jake wait, lose momentum, and then it will happen. But in terms of other fights, I think obviously Anderson Gibb wants to fight. Deji wants to fight. Apart from that, I mean, there's not really many credible matchups uh, that people will get behind. You know, YouTube is like Logan Paul going against Antonio Brown. He's obviously the NFL star. Like. That's cool, and I think he's made it to a point where people are sort of invested, but it, it will not have the traction that two YouTubers going at it has. And when there's not many YouTubers that are wanting to do it, it's like, you, you, you can't, I just can't see how it's going to keep going on and on and on, unless the zone turn around and be like, oh, well, mate, it is two mil. Like, you know, that's the thing, it has to be seen. And I think the serious money will tempt people, and obviously, you know, I do say, don't do it unless you want to fight. But that is a factor, like if the zone turn up, if the zone came to me and said, well, mate, uh, we know you secretly like boxing, as in like you love actually doing it, is, is this paycheck fight Deji? I'll probably be like, yeah. But at the same time, I, um, yeah, like anyone watching, I've, I've, I'd, I'd say to do something that as brutal as this sport, you ha your head has to be fully into it, not just, oh, I'm doing it for a paycheck. What would you do different this time around if you are to come back? Uh, I think, well, co get, get coaches that I fully am connected to on every level, like credible ones that have been there, done it, like Johnny Nelson. Some, you know, I feel like me and him got on so well. Uh, he's been there, he's gone through losses, he's fought on the biggest stage, he's been a you know, champ and stuff. So that sort of level, without a doubt, I think I'd, I'd not live at home. I'd go away to have a camp um, and as well just like enjoy it, make it about enjoying the process. Last time it was, I overtrained. I trained for seven months full on and by Christmas, like three months, two months before the fight, I was burnt out. Um, so yeah, just do everything in a more like, yeah, we're going to make the most of this rather than, oh, we're going to absolutely destroy me and try and cram as much in so that come fight night, you're just burnt out. So yeah, that's what I'd do. Um, there's so much, but that's the thing, compared to when, I've, when I did my fight, mate, I've changed so much, I've grown so much, that like, almost the fears and the worries that I have about if I did it again, 
you could almost go like, well, mate, you've, you've come on so much that they wouldn't even be a problem anymore. It's all a mental thing. It's like once, yeah, anyways, getting into a bit of a therapy session here, but like, but um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think maybe one day, maybe one day, I'm not ruling it out, but as of right now, there's, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I really want to have a fight. You mentioned kind of, I, mean, I know you're sort of saying it tongue in cheek about the therapy side of things. I think it's quite interesting, and particularly with boxing. Boxing such a, it's such a lonely sport. When you get into that ring, I mean, it's, it's a cliche, but when the lights come down, it is just you in there. And I, it does show you an awful lot about yourself, I would imagine, that you, you can only really find out about yourself if you're in that situation. Definitely. I think the, the, the biggest thing as well is, you know, you spend so much time training on, you know, you and your coaches. Well, I was, me and my coaches in a gym, that's it. I didn't, I didn't realistically see anyone for seven months. And then you get put in front of a crowd and it's just you in front of this big crowd. And it's like fucking, of course that's gonna make you have some sort of like, you're either gonna freeze to fuck, which is what happened to me, or you're gonna somehow just get, mo like, I don't know, it's gonna trigger you to, to perform. But from, yeah, I, I think that's another thing that I think I would do. I'd do make sure I'm doing public performances. Whether, I don't know how that, whether it's, I don't know what type, but like KSI said that he did music shows and performances on the lead up to Wild Fight, which prepared him for when he got out there, he was just fine, it was just easy. Whereas, yeah, I, I didn't, and I think that's the big thing for me. When I can do all the training in the world, but I often bottle it when it gets in front of the, the crowd situation. So if anything, I'd, do, <laughs> I'd, do, I'd focus on that more, more, more than anything. What they say about the game is it's, it's a more mental sport than it is physical. I mean, consider how much of a physical sport it is. That's quite an interesting um, way of talking about it. Okay, before I let you go, somebody told me once that you had said or you'd made comments about potentially one day being a promoter. So I'm going to give you your promoter's license right now. Make me a YouTube card. So you've got three fights. We'll allow you to headline because it's your show. So who are you fighting as the headline and who are your chief support fights? Well, the biggest fight that they're boxing today is the KSI versus Weller rematch. So, I mean, it just is. Like, that's the one that the UK would, well, mate, we all want to fucking see it realistically. Yeah. So that's it. That's top in the bill. <laughs> and then undercard, you've got... You've got... Oh, wow. Can I do a triple threat match? <laughs> no, is <laughs> no, it like... I don't know, because you, the rivalry of UK versus America is huge. You'd almost say, yeah, you want the... Jake Paul versus uh, Deji, nah, I don't know, because I don't know if that would bang as much. But, um, fuck, it's making me realize the big draws, there aren't many. You'd go, okay, yeah, you'd go Jake Paul versus Deji on the undercard, the rematch of that. And then also Logan Paul versus Anderson Gibb. I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. I'd, I'd put that one forward and just see. I think Gibbs' style could cause problems for Logan. Logan doesn't like, you know, when someone's coming forward and throwing, he can't, he, he doesn't like it as much. That's why JJ was able to just like bully him. So I think, yeah, I want to see Gibbs versus Logan Paul. Obviously, they both have to get the same, the same weight, and I don't know how easy that'll be, but yeah, that's my three fights. Okay, last one Jake Paul versus Logan Paul. Who wins? Jake Paul. Just, I think it comes down to who's the more. Who's the cold-hearted killer? Jake Paul. And that's why the KSI match is going to be good because they're both, Jake Paul and KSI are cold-hearted cold -hearted killers. They're both like that. So that's, going, that's why that's going to be so good. Okay. Well, Joe Weller, I've seen so much of you on the channel but yet to have done an interview with myself. So I'm glad we've ticked that off. Thanks very much for speaking to Boxing Social. As always, not just to me, but obviously our other guys. Uh, look forward to catching up with you soon, mate. Respect. Enjoy the fight, mate. Nice one, lovely. Nice.